Customers demand simpler ways to deploy and implement their security policies for vSphere-based environments. The new VMware vCenter plugin for NSXT, introduced with vSphere 7.0 Update 3C and NSXT 3.2, makes simplicity possible. Users can now use NSXT as a plugin for vCenter, similar to how earlier versions of NSX were configured. Through wizard-assisted operations, security policies can easily be configured, deployed, and operated within vCenter. For HCI platforms such as VxRail, vSAN Ready Nodes, or PowerEdge servers hosting vSAN-based workloads, NSX becomes an optimal network and security engine. In this video, we will briefly show the NSXT Manager installation process, as well as the vCenter plugin deployment. As we configure the distributed firewall rules of our vSphere environment, we will focus on the security aspects enabled by this vCenter plugin. Installing NSXT Manager is pretty straightforward. We select the NSX installation file from available templates, then the name of the virtual machine and the vSphere server in which it will be placed. Shortly after, we have our NSX Manager installation ready to complete. Providing a proper license key finalizes the NSXT Manager installation process. When NSXT Manager is in place, we can deploy the new method to configure and operate NSX security, as introduced with NSXT 3.2 and vSphere 7.0 Update 3C, the vCenter plugin for NSX. In dealing specifically with the security features of NSXT 3.2, the focus is on the security-only use case that is shown on the left, and not the virtual networking path as pictured on the right. In this video, we are deploying the vCenter plugin on a VxRail 4-node cluster, but the outcomes would be the same if we chose a Dell vSAN ready node or a PowerEdge with vSAN cluster. When we have finished deploying the plugin, we are ready to configure the distributed firewall policies for our VxRail cluster that we want to implement in our organization. The next step is to create some basic firewall rules, and to do that, we need to define some infrastructure services. Typical network services include DNS. We start by creating an infrastructure group that is dedicated to the DNS service. We select the service, in this case DNS, and the IP address of the entity that will provide the DNS service. In this case, a physical server that is external to our vSphere environment. It also may have been a virtual machine. In just a few clicks, we have added a DNS service to their environment, compliant with the firewall rules defined in our NSX policies. As a last step, once we have the NSX infrastructure and basic services deployed, let's create the environment that is going to consume those services. We start by defining a production group formed by two VMs, App1DB and App2DB. Next, we'll create a DMZ group formed by the VMs App1Web and App2Web. Using the same process, we will create a third environmental group in this case, testing, with the VM's TestDB and TestWeb in it. We can go one step further and define what applications run inside a particular group. So, we are defining three application groups, App1, App2, and Test, that will host the VMs of the production, DMZ, and testing environmental groups. App1DB and App2DB will belong to the App1 application group, the DMZ VMs will belong to the App2 application group, and the TestDB and TestWeb VMs will belong to the application group called Test. Scaling these environments would be as simple as assigning the new resources the proper NSX tags so they would be automatically added to the corresponding groups. The next natural step is to define how the elements in our environment can communicate with each other. Specifically, we'll implement a design that defines how environment groups, production, DMZ, or testing, can communicate. 
In this case, we will define just one communication path in which the DMZ groups can talk to the production group. This makes sense because this way, our front-end web servers can communicate with the back-end database applications. Testing remains totally isolated. No communications are allowed to reach the DMZ group. The last step in this deployment and configuration process is to define the communication strategies for applications. We have three application groups, App1, App2, and Test, and want to limit the traffic that the applications running inside them can receive. We would define them only to receive HTTPS, port 443, traffic. To do so, we create a strategy for the three application groups to reject all traffic and add one exception, port 443 for HTTPS traffic. This means that the default action for the firewall will be to drop any traffic packet that does not match the firewall rules allowed within this network. In our case, it will drop everything but HTTPS port 443 packets. Before committing all these policy configurations, it's a good idea to review them in the Firewall Rules dashboard. There we can check that everything is properly set, and when done, we can publish the policies. Before going live, we can always come back to review and edit any policy or rule that has been defined. We can check that our application policies are properly defined and in place and we can do the same for our environmental and infrastructure rules. Using an external VM, we can verify that the only traffic allowed to our environment is HTTPS port 443. Now we can see that the only communication path defined between our environmental groups allows a production VM, App1 Web, to communicate with a DMZ VM, in this case App1 DB. In this same way, App2Web can talk to App2DB. The testing environment is effectively isolated and can only communicate with elements inside the environmental group. VMs inside the production group can't talk to anyone because we haven't defined any communication paths going outside the production group. As mentioned before, we can edit any rule anytime. We can now do so to allow only HTTPS port 443 traffic and not traffic from port 80 or port 3306 in the communication defined specifically from DMZ to production. Our front-end web servers can now only talk HTTPS to the database back-end servers within production. The rest of the communications remain unchanged. VxRail, Dell vSAN ready nodes, and PowerEdge with vSAN deployments offer a reliable way to implement the important security rules that businesses require today. In those scenarios, the new NSX vCenter plugin provides a simple configuration framework for existing VDS-based networks with a robust and easy-to-use NSX security feature set. No advanced networking, such as L3 to L7, is required. Thanks for watching this video. We hope it shows how simple security operations can become with the new vCenter plugin for NSX.